my friends, to finding calm in the chaos. I am Denise Sip, and this is my podcast. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another edition of Finding Calm in the Chaos. I am Denise, and today's Thursday. Uh, thanks for all your patience, guys, the last couple of weeks trying to get those Wednesdays episodes um, are really rough uh, because my schedule has all changed. So I really don't have any time to record on Monday and Tuesday. So I have nothing for Wednesday. But now that I'm open on Wednesday, um, outside of our homeschooling in the morning, I'm recording on Wednesdays. So you are listening to this on Thursday. So happy Thursday, peeps. Um this episode is called um, Mommy Burnout. It is what it is. I am uh, apparently in um, high fucking mommy burnout. So I was uh, reading this article earlier today while I was having a mental breakdown. Uh, I am just, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being the only one responsible for doing everything and that I literally feel guilty being like, excuse me, I have to go potty. Can somebody watch the pasta so I don't piss my pants? Like that kind of thing. I'm just tired. I'm fucking tired, peeps. And I know that you want to get it. I, I know a lot of you get this. And um, I was reading this thing about mommy burnout. It's like two or three parts, but um. Apparently there's a book and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm totally getting this book on. I got like audible credits, so I got to get this book. But um, it, it's just really hard. Like I made dinner tonight and uh, this is Wednesday night, by the way. And um, it was some sort of uh, Malfadine pasta with Calabrian peppers and uh, what else was on it? You put like olive tapenade on it with some roasted cauliflower in like in a butter sauce with, you know, your basic aromatics and stuff like that. And it was amazing. But, you know, Pete was, I had made Pete separate because it said it had the Calabrian peppers in it. So it didn't want it to be hot. So I pulled out an entire fucking jar of pasta sauce so I could take three tablespoons and put it in Pete's pasta bowl. I'll probably toss it later and it costs like nine bucks or something because welcome to 2023 in a grocery store. Um, and... And I'm pretty sure it's Rouse or Thrive Market. One of the two. Not sure. Um, Irrelevant. But, you know, he's fucking bitching about something. And the deal is, is that, you know, we homeschool, but there has to be a schedule. And he, in the, you know, since the parentals have been here, have deci has decided that he can, like, run the show a little bit. And that's just not going to happen. And, uh... I've been letting some of it slide and letting some of it slide, and now I'm not. And Wednesdays, I've literally essentially been kicked out of my house um, because he does not focus in the house with them here. And that is my main homeschooling day. So I now displaced myself in my own fucking house. <laughs> Yay. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm like literally beyond exhausted, and I will sleep zero fucking hours today. You guys know how it is. I know some of you were late. Um, and so I'm making pasta. I've got like five fucking pans going. Nobody's going to let the dog out. Like everyone will just sit the fuck on their asses. Dog barking outside, dog barking inside. Nobody will set a table. Today we did have, I brought my own bowls out, but today I sat down at the table while I fed everybody first and nobody even got me a goddamn utensil. Sorry, I took the Lord's name in vain, but that's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Nobody could get me a fucking fork. Um, just the level of disrespect is unacceptable to me. So I'm, you know, I'm enforcing it. I become the fucking enforcer in the house now. So that makes me the bad guy. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not here to make any fucking friends. So too bad. I don't really care. It is what it is. If you don't like it, move to somebody else's house. That's kind of how I feel right now. Um... So needless to say, I've got like, you know, five fucking pots going, all this bullshit. And he's whining about, you know, because he'll suck his food down and then want to go upstairs and ask what kind of fucking treats he can have to the parentals. 
And now they have like long johns or some bullshit. And I already told him that he couldn't have any dessert if he didn't finish the schoolwork. We didn't finish at the library today because he kind of phased off at the end of our time there. It was literally one unit that he had to do on Hooked on Spelling. And he didn't do it. And I wasn't going to remind him because that's just not how it works. I, he was told several times during the day. He didn't do it. Then I asked if he can have one. I told him no. Then he had grandpa ask if he could have one. I said no. Then he had grandma ask if he can have one. And I said no. And then grandpa asked again. And then he asked me again. And then he's like walking around crying. And I'm like, I wish I could fucking just walk around and cry. And when nobody fucking gives me a fork at the table to eat dinner. My stomach, I'm so stressed out. I couldn't fucking eat. They'll all just talk over me, ignore me, not do whatever. And I got so physically upset by it. I couldn't fucking eat. So I ate half my bowl and then tossed the rest. I'm like, whatevs. And then made myself a jing soda so I can have like some sort of mushroom whatever's in it with some pomegranate seeds. And I'll be up all night drinking water anyway. So what difference does it make? But anyway, um, I was reading this woman's uh, examples, right? Um, her name is Jessica Elliott. And so these aren't my words. The story is hers. And she was saying that um, this is like something that hit her. So she was standing in the kitchen eyeing a pot full of chili. Uh, I'd absent men, absent-mindedly left out overnight, uh, made to last at least a few dinners. Don't you hate when that shit happens, right? You're so exhausted. You cooked all day. So you'd be able to lighten your load for the week. And then nobody bothered to put the fucking pot away at the end. Oh, I'm telling you right now, it's happened in my house. Um, so a year before, I'd have to spend some energy upset about the waste. Instead, I shrugged and blankly stared out the kitchen window, the trees becoming a hazy burr uh, as the chili slid down the drain, and I was too tired to care. Amen, sister. We totally know what you're talking about. This wasn't the first day I'd had such an apathetic reaction. Off and on for months, I'd felt impatient, anxious, maybe even uninterested in parenting. I'm with you, girl. Uh, it was a challenging state of mind when I drifted into while caring for my two-year-old son and five-month-old identical twin daughters. Woo, this woman got three children. Um, as the chili disappeared, I gave up on assembling a solidly nutritious lunch for my son and poured him some cereal. That's when it hit me. I was burned out, toasted, crisp to a multi-grain Cheerios level that required far more intervention than a coffee date or a pedicure. I, these words, like, like seriously. So she says, though it was little consolation, I knew I wasn't alone. Late night or rapid fire nap time texts from friends often consisted of confessions of exhaustion, of feeling overwhelmed, of day-to-day -day parenting, uh, minutia leading to minimal patience, dissatisfaction, and emotional withdrawal. The number of moms reeling from this host of emotion is well documented in books, articles, medical journeys, and surveys. And let's be honest, right? And still, people don't give a fuck about it. Like, there needs to be some mom fucking revolution because I'm over people just being assholes, okay? So the official term for this hung out, like, to dry state is mommy burnout, right? It is recognized as real and, quite frankly, according to the mental health world, a quite serious, potentially serious problem, right? It creates the seemingly inescapable emptiness that impedes your ability to properly care for yourself and your family. Like, I don't even know why I walk into rooms sometimes. I got shit going all over, three things, whatever, and then you go, so like, you know, your husband's playing a fucking game on the phone, and you're like, can you take the garbage out? I can't do two things at once. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, like, get the fuck out of here right now. Are you kidding me? So do you have mommy burnout? Here's me. I want to know. Do I have, like, mommy burnout? So apparently, there, um, I took this burnout quiz created by two of the exhausted parent researchers. So the researchers are Isabel Roscom and Maura Mikolacic, I think it is. Mikolacic. Check. M-I-K-O-L-A-J-C-Z-A-K. Mikolacic. Anyway, to gauge your own burnout level, right? So take the assessment at, and it's burnoutparental.com. B-U-R-N-O-U-T 
P-A-R-E-N-T-A-L.com. Okay, parental, uh, burnoutparental.com. So um, this woman, um, according to her quiz, she was moderately burned out. Okay. Um, I'll give you my result in a minute. But so the intensity of mommy burnout lies between like stress and postpartum depression, which I don't have. I have postpartum rage. Yeah, I won the F lottery. Um, so according to the exhausted parent study, okay, that's what they say. Okay, it lies between those things. So burnout compounds when perceived demands continually outweigh resources. So when there's no respite from like acute stress, right? It happens when that happens. Okay. So it's basically um, akin to having a completely overwhelming day every fucking day. Like some people will never be able to relate to this. And it, it's really kind of pissing me off because in my household, even though I ask for help and I tell people it is, I am still fucking ignored. And then when I blow and go into rage mode, everybody looks at me like they're shocked and in horror. And it's such a surprise that it happened. And I'm like, really? Are you surprised? Like maybe we need IQ tests in my house. I'm just saying. Um, so... Uh, there's a PhD by name of Katie Sardone, and she said, it's like a bank account that keeps dwindling. You hit your limit, you keep going, and once you overdraft, there's fees and fines, and you're going into debt, and it takes so long for people to see they're in the red, then you're done. You're in full burnout, right? Um, it's just, it's it's really sad how much of this is going on. Um, but so I took this test, guys, and... I know that everybody is talking in the background in my house, but I'm going to be super honest with you right now. I'm tired of recording in my closet. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay, so I'm in my office and not a single person in my house gives a fuck that I have a podcast that is actually international. They probably think I just sit down here and talk to myself, but I appreciate each and every one of you who have reached out to me saying you don't really care if you hear the background noise. So I appreciate that. So I'm just running along here. Okay. Um, so... I'm going to give you another example. So it's not just me, but I took the quiz and I answered super honestly and I reached high burnout risk. <laughs> Shocker. Um, so it says you currently have a high risk of parental burnout. The main problem seems to be fatigue and exhaustion. You don't say. Anyway, uh, more and more often you are at the end of your rope, feeling that you can no longer do it. You try to give the change. You try to stay the course for your children, but you start to crack. You're probably more susceptible, more irritable, and this has an impact on your relationships with your spouse and or your relationships with your children. You get angry faster than usual. You have less patience. A oh, fucking duh. You disengage from some of your parenting tasks. You love your children, but sometimes you just want to take a break from your role as a parent. And by break, I mean, I would like to go to a different fucking state by myself. I'm just saying, uh, back to the burnout risk. You want to find time for yourself. At this point, it is indeed crucial that you are able to free up this time for you on the one hand and for your couple on the other. And here's me, like, whatever. <laughs> like, where the fuck am I going to go? Like half the time when I go, people are just as uptight and have their own. Like, I just need like a girl's weekend away from everything. Like, I don't want, like, I literally want like all my crochet friends or find a craft. I want to rent a hotel room, like in a fucking mountain somewhere. And then I want to just crochet and chit chat and fucking like have appetizers. That's where I'm at. Um, maybe go to some nice dinner. So one of them I'm, I'm reading here, um, I'm trying to like, so this is another example that the um, person, Jessica, that wrote this article. So it says desperate for a night off. So the evening after delivering my twins via unexpected C-section, I found myself downright relaxed, giddy even as I lay in my hospital bed. Oh, I've been here, Jessica. Um, my 19 month old rainbow baby, my first son was snoozing in his crib. Um, confirmed via iPoy, uh, iPhone app. Uh, the substantial weight and stress of carrying my preemies had lifted and the girls were being cared for in the NICU. Dinner was delivered and I felt like I was on vacation. 
Let me tell you this, people. That's fucking sadder than shit that a woman is saying. She was in a hospital post-delivering C-section and felt like she was on fucking vacation. Think about that, man. Think about that. There are people who haven't even had hospital stays, right? And they're just like, they have no idea. Shitty food. You don't even, this woman does not care that she was being delivered any fucking meal, let alone hospital food. I know I'm a professional hospital stayer, okay? But I have been there where in the hospital is like a fucking retreat because you don't have to do nothing but lay there and walk around the hall in your room a little bit when they tell you and maybe take a trip to fucking x-ray. You know what I'm saying? You might not, but that is sad as shit that this woman feels this way. This is a problem, okay? So before the twins, she's carrying on here. I devoted every minute to my precious son and while pregnant, didn't feel good enough to take any sort of real vacation. Not to mention, I worked harder than ever to earn the time off and financial cushion I'd need when my twins arrive. Sadly, I'm not alone in enjoying a hospital visit. Maybe you know the feeling. Yeah, I do, sister. That urge to escape for a break, even if it means being in an unfavorable situation. Women suffer from burnout often looking to debilitating circumstances for downtime. When women tell me they want to run away or get injured so they will be taken care of for a change, I hear chronic stress that has turned into mommy burnout ringing through. Are you kidding me? Like, right? I totally relate to this, this woman right now. Wait, let me finish this. She speaks from experience once she thought she might need surgery and was looking forward to a, quote, much needed break, unquote. Then when doctors determined she didn't need surgery after all, she was disappointed not to be getting a night off in the hospital. What the actual fuck people? But like, think about it. Women are expected to be like CEO of a company, manage a household, create grocery lists, help with bills. Like you can't keep up all of the balls at the same time. I don't even fucking like jugglers because they're usually clowns. And y'all know I don't do clowns. So not only do burned out mothers feel a loss of self-identity, they're now also feeling trapped. And that's how they end up fantasizing about having ailments or sicknesses that warrant a night away. What? It sounds good though. Like honest to God, sometimes I'm like, damn, maybe I'll get something that's just going to like fucking put me in because I'm done. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like shit. So they're saying like, I'm just going to read this part. Sorry. I know this is kind of lazy, but I really like this. And I think it's something that we need to start talking about. Um, it doesn't matter how much I talk about it in my house, but maybe if we all do it as women in general, um, maybe men will all start talking it amongst themselves because we're all putting pressure on them. And maybe amongst themselves, they can talk like a tribe of chimpanzees and maybe fucking figure out they need to do something. I'm just saying. Um, the economics of stress is this section. It says parental burnout triggers are wide ranging, but experts and research confirm that intensive parenting norms and the pressure for perfectionism, both societal and individual, are two of the main culprits. Okay, mine is not societal because I give two shits when anybody's doing outside of my house. I just care about me. But I have individual perfectionism. I know that for a fact. I'm always making sure that I'm doing as much as I can, and I'm always questioning myself always, especially when you're a homeschool mom, you're always wondering, are you doing enough? Is my kid there? It, it, why isn't my kid there? Is it, it just, you know what I mean? Parents are feeling more pressure to raise successful, well-rounded kids, uh, possibly thanks to part uh, to income inequality. Okay. So I'm not even going to go into this part because I think they're going to go into this huge political thing about income inequality. And I will be honest with you. I never had that issue as a woman in the field. I always asked for money when I went in. I told them what I wanted or I wasn't there and threw out my credentials. And I always got it. So I always made what the boys made because I opened my mouth and said something. Just saying. So um, I think that mommy burnout is a serious thing. But I like you guys need to take this quiz. 
So high expectations for ourselves, okay? So even with abundant resources, women have a hard time delegating, right? Which could be credited to an unspoken societal pressure to be super mom. I'll be honest with you, I don't really have that. I do what I can every day because I put in 150% to everything. This is part of my Overachievers Anonymous shit. However, which isn't so anonymous anymore. However, I do feel that um, this whole societal, you know, societal thing that females do everything mentality that adds to stress. Like, I'm still not understanding why men feel like just sit the fuck around. And I don't know about like the new generation. Like they got a whole load, boatload of problems. I ain't speaking about them. I'm speaking about people who like are in relationships who um, are raising kids and it's not a 50-50 situation at all fucking at all if my husband did a quarter of the things i do in a day he would fucking drop dead and i'm not even exaggerating he would drop fucking dead and i don't even know why because i would work two jobs plus another one and still do it better i'm just saying it's just the truth <laughs> it is what it is but um you know just even therapy. I mean, even when, you know, they always fuck with me like the day after I see my therapist. I don't know who sees a therapist, but if you're listening to this podcast, you know, I encourage everyone to, but I will tell you right now, I talked to my therapist yesterday and we had a great conversation about shit. And then the next day, everybody like overloads me and, um, I feel like a jerk. So there's that. Um, so there's, um, here are some symptoms that cross the line from burnout to depression or anxiety. Okay. So <clears throat> I don't think I have anxiety or depression. It definitely have burnout. I'm just saying. Um, but apparently I do. I'm in high risk. <laughs> um, but it says, have you been engaging in reckless behavior to escape your family or responsibilities? Experiencing real problems with concentration? Holy fuck, this is all me so far. <laughs> experiencing headaches and stomach aches. Yeah, I couldn't even finish my dinner today. Um, having suicidal thoughts or fantasies such as disappearing permanently. No, I never choose that. I'll be honest with you. I will kill a bitch before I kill myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Or am I? Um, abandoning your goals completely? No, because I wouldn't trust to the fucked up state it would be in when I came back. Um, Snapping at people easily and exhibiting close to zero patience for your kids or spout. Oh yeah, I'm there right now. Struggling to get out of bed in the morning and fantasize about sleeping all the time. I would, I wish I could have a fantasy about just sleeping at night. Like I'll take like six hours, seven hours a night, every night, like no interruptions, like consistently. That'd be a great fucking dream. Just saying. Um... It says, have you been preoccupied with something most di most days of the week and hours of the day for the past six months? Yes. Um, experiencing trouble sitting still, fatigue, trouble concentrating, agitation, tight or sore muscles, or difficulty falling or staying asleep. Well, yeah, but I also have lupus, so that like pretty much is all encompassing. <laughs> it's some some of this shit is so vague, but um, dealing with so much worry that it causes significant stress and interferes with daily life. No, it doesn't interfere with daily life. Apparently, if you have a lot of these, you, then you might be anxious. I don't have time to be anxious. I know that's horrible to say because anxiety like riddles some of my friends horribly. Um, but I just, I don't have time to have fucking anxiety. I've got rage issues instead. So I guess I traded that off. But yeah, so I am a high burnout risk. <laughs> and I encourage you to find out what, um, where you are. So let me tell you what the website is again it is a blah, 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 blah. and then we'll move on to how we should fix it but it it where the hell did the website go oh my goodness oh it's burned out parental.com all one words burn out parental.com okay burnout parental.com okay so we are going to move into, um, I think, I think there's like a, like, what should we do? Like, yeah, burnoutparental.com. I just found it. I was like, shit, where did it go? Like, what the heck, man? Um, 
And I still like, I didn't even, I'm not, I have a crochet project I'm supposed to be finishing and I just can't even cause I can't concentrate on like counting. So like, what do we actually, here's how to really like actually fix it. Okay. Apparently. So, so <sighs> I guess now that we know that there are causes and symptoms of like mommy, um, the key takeaway from basically the whole first half of this 25 minutes was unrealistic expectations, whether self-imposed or societal, okay, along with a host of other problems, including lack of face-to-face -face connections, absence of familial support, and hyper-involved parenting are leading to mommy burnout. And this syndrome is recognized by experts as real and a pervasive problem, okay? Um, who's at risk reaching a state of utter exhaustion that can lead to emotional detachments from your children and a feeling of incompetence as a parent. So the good news is that mommy burnout is preventable and it's curable. The bad news, uh, the solution requires like a lot of dedication and commitment when reserves are empty, which is pretty much all the time for me. And ironically, uh, the one thing we all need more time, uh, more of, which is time right? But your family life and my health and all of that uh, may depend on it, right? So when mama ain't happy, you need to know like what to do, okay? And you need to focus on yourself and you got to shore up the reserves of patience and control your temper. It just is what it is. It's hard. You got to get yourself back. So I've been trying to have dinners and coffees more and more um, I had an amazing dinner last week with a friend. It was, a, it was freaking awesome, but just sitting down and sometimes talking with someone who connects, right? Um, cause nobody's don't compare yourself with anybody because comparison is a killer. Okay. Nobody's circumstance is like yours. Okay. Nobody's alike. Um, also you want to prioritize self-care. I have a massage on Friday. I'm looking forward to it. It's midday. I don't give a shit, even if my kid has to come with me or he stays home with the parentals because self-care is not selfish. I really blurred that line it was super blurry to me, um, in the past. And it's crucial to maintaining your patience, like your mood, your approach to every day. It's like literally a human need. Okay. Self care. Don't eliminate excuses on that shit. Just do what you got to do. Invest in your relationships. Relationships. Okay. Call a friend. So if you got 23 minutes, find a friend. And I'm going to be honest with you. Find a friend that picks up. Don't call the same person who never fucking picks up. Okay. Because they're too busy because they got their own shit going on. So here's something I learned. It doesn't mean that the friend that never picks up is a bad friend. It just means that they're not the right friend for you in these circumstances. That when you're in crisis mode, there is somebody to call. Okay? Not somebody who's going to dismiss you. Not someone who's going to be like, yeah, this happened again. But somebody you can talk to, like a good old pal, who's going to counter you with that. They got the same shit going on at home and kind of make you both feel like, damn, what the hell's wrong with both of us? Um, no. But it balances that you're not alone. And that's super important. Okay. Um, and here's, this is real excited too. You need to social media detox. I have spent less and less and less time on social media. I have found that I'm only doing it to do what I need to do, like to run Buster's page or my page or, you know, the, the podcast page, I'm not doing that, you know, set a regular on hour. Like I know what time I'm doing it. It can be as simple as if you just want to play on it, say you don't use it for business or you don't use it for, to run an account. You're just on social media, okay? Use it, but don't let it use you. And that can be as simple as literally not scrolling 15 minutes before bedtime. I do like a color by number and half the time I fall asleep while I'm doing it on my phone, but I try not to go on Instagram. Once I realize that I'm not going to sleep at all, then I reel it because I'm, I'm not going to be up. So what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Um, earmark vacation days. So like literally figure out what you're going to do. Okay. And get it done. Be cognizant of who you are choosing to follow. Okay. 
if somebody is, if you're following somebody who's like on all these vacations because you had these dreams of doing that one day and you watch it and you're becoming envious and depressed over it, please unfollow. Like, don't get like put in a run over it. You know what I mean? Understand that most of these moms who have all their children like perfectly coordinated and they're like in perfect clothes and they're doing something created in a craft make you feel like an idiot. Ditch them because you're going to feel better for it because that's just social media shit. Her kids are a hot mess too and she's only filming in one part of her house that has been set up with her camera and her little ring and all that to show exactly what they want you to see. Um, nobody's kids are that clean, period. Don't put your weight on followers, numbers, likes. Get away from all that. I did. I don't give a shit anymore. Um, I follow followers for Buster's page just because, you know, for giveaways and stuff like that. Set your phone aside and spend time with your loved ones. You know, I try to do that and they basically ignore me. So read a book, do an audible book. That's what I've been doing. I'm like, well, my family won't talk to me. This guy reading a book will. Um, identify how you react to stress. So this is very um, important because I had to find out why I addressed things. So you need to, why I freaked out all the time and went into rage mode. And that's because you need to determine your style, like your stress style and how you should respond. And then that can help you prevent this barrage of like these smaller stressors, right? Such as like, you know, when your kid's having a tantrum and shit um, while you're late, you know what I mean? From turning into like chronic stress, cause that's just like a small stressor, but that can really stress you out, okay? So there is a book called Mommy Burnout by um, a psychologist by the name of Cheryl Ziegler, Z-I-E-G-L-E-R. And she identifies these three stress styles, fighting, fleeing, and freezing. I straight up do not have to read this book. I will, but, or listen to it, I should say. But I already fucking know I'm a fighter. <laughs> Simple as that. So let's go through the three styles. Um, so the fighter responds with anger, irritability, agitation, and might find solace in activities that calm the nervous system, right? deep breathing, soothing images, confiding in a friend. So I like chit-chatting when it happens and I like crochet. You might do yoga, I crochet. You know what I'm saying? I read. It's fine what works for you, but I am 100% a fighter. Boom. Then there's the moms who flee. Okay, so flee is the second style. And they react to stress with like isolation, depression, tuning out the environment, mentally escaping via TV or phone, sometimes by taking a drive, okay, a massage, walking, jogging, journaling, right? That can help instead of uh, fleeing 100%, flee using something uh, constructive. And then the last one is moms who tend to freeze. Freeze is the last stress style um, or basically feeling paralyzed in a crisis. And that could benefit um, that could benefit from activities that engage the nervous system. So it would help running, dancing, swimming, mindfulness. Okay. So that's super interesting um, because I'm definitely, I'm sure that you can totally find out which one identifies with you. So mommy burnout, those, so these tips are straight from the book. I'm just going to go through what they are. We're not going to talk about them because I haven't read the book yet, but I'm literally getting this as soon as I get off this recording. Um, she says you need to identify your stress style. So determine whether apparently you're the fighter, fleer, or freezer and how you can help alleviate the tension, right? Because that's going to prevent your single stressful events from morphing into like the big chronic stress. Okay. Be proactive in preventing stress, right? Uh, compartmentalize your life, right? You're creating work home time boundaries, that kind of stuff. I'm doing that now, which is why I'm getting the kickback from Peter. Um, manage your time, which I always do. Um, however, um, nobody else is on schedule. It's usually just me. Uh, get some perspective. So instead of blaming others for stressful situations or making excuses for unhappiness, strive to find positives in your situation, right? Because optimists uh, like ba better manage stress. Yeah. I'm working on that. Uh, take steps to manage aspects of your life that bring you down right? So figure out like, you know, where you're working, where you're living, how much money you make, what you spend, what you eat, how you parent, like tweak it, tweak it all on how it works for you. 
add nature into your daily life. This is great unless you work in the Midwest. I'm just saying, right? Or Canada or in a snowy area. Take a walk outside. Go for a swim. Ride your bike. Well, we can't do that in the fall and winter. Just sorry, peeps. It's too fucking cold. Uh, so find something else. You know, use the Peloton. Do something. There you go. Um, even if it's maybe sitting outside with a hot cocoa or a coffee. Tend, but don't overtend to your kids. Now, this is what I'm working on. Know when to step away and allow your children to try to work out problems on your own. But also, don't let them run your ass over. I said this was the rule. He needed to finish this whole thing on Hooked on Spelling. When we got home, he didn't do that. We had dinner. He didn't do that. Then all of a sudden, he needs a long john. That's not happening. Then he did it at like 6.30 and then wanted to know if he can have a donut. And I'm like, no. Then he had a meltdown. You can have a meltdown all you want shouldn't have to beg you to get it. You don't get a reward for having to been told several times. You knew what the task was, period. I'm sticking to that shit. And connect with other women. This is super important and something I'm really working hard on. Females need friendship when we're stressed. And the more you deny yourself these bonds, which is what I was doing, the worse your mommy burnout will become. Find women you can talk to, vent to, and laugh with and find ones that aren't judgmental like fuck those bitches let's be honest okay nobody got time for some judgmental friends get rid of them people you need someone who literally can just hang out i don't have i have a funny story but i can't share it unless i know um i can share it and then just kind of refrain from her name but i gotta ask her permission but um i have a funniest ass story and it was just like it was such a bonding moment for me and one of my mommy friends but it was um I don't want to share. I don't want to share it yet until I know that um, she's okay with me sharing it, and I won't share her name. But um, I still want to ask permission. That's all I got for today. Don't forget burnoutparental.com and then burnout parent, the book. Check it out. That's all I got for today. Say some prayers. I'll survive because I got Jesus on my side. Anyway. Go into the rest of the week and lead with kindness. I'll see you on Saturday. Bye. Bye.